Hello, I'm Rida Fakhri. Welcome to We the People, a new series which takes us across the United States of America to meet some of the people whose lives are being affected by the issues gripping this year's presidential election. As the U.S. economy struggles, one of the main concerns for many Americans is unemployment. Few places have suffered more from the economic downturn than the Midwest state of Ohio. It was once a major industrial powerhouse, but in the last eight years, over 250,000 jobs have disappeared. The city of Dayton was once a thriving manufacturing town. Recently, companies such as Delphi, which supplied automobile parts to General Motors, have shut down plants and filed for bankruptcy. Many blame this on international trade agreements such as NAFTA, which make it easier for American companies to find cheap labor abroad. Ohio is a strategic battleground state. It's been visited by all three presidential candidates more than 80 times, as they promised the creation of new jobs. We the people traveled to Dayton to hear how people are getting by amid their losses and promises of a better future. My name is David Rayford. I am 31 years old. I was an employee of General Motors for seven years. I did everything I could for GM. Why did they get rid of my job? We were living off of my income only. My name is Donika Rayford. I am the wife of David Rayford. Right now, I'm a customer service rep. She works a 20-minute drive from where we live, and not because she wants to be there. That's just where the job was, because she couldn't find nothing within the city limits and I'm still searching. We use 15 to 20 dollars a day in gas. You, you put in 30 dollars now, you won't even get 10 gallons. And you hope that that'll take care of the next two days at least. And now we're, we're surviving off of her income. We used to ride past the plant and I used to look at the place going up and say one day I'm going to work for them, and once I get in there, I'll have it made. And for Dayton, Ohio, it was the best, highest paying job that you could find around here without a college education. General Motors had their own secret society. You get discounts for being a GM employee, and it's love everywhere. You could get a loan without any problem. You could get houses, you could get cars. And we could make it off of my income alone. She didn't even have to work. Matter of fact, she was just going to school. About a year after being married, we went and purchased the house. Then came June 2006, June 30th, my last day at GM. The announcement, it hit hard. It hit the news all that day, that night. GM is cutting X amount of workers, and I knew I was one, I was one of those numbers. We was just getting into the second year of marriage, and it was a little much. So um, we actually ended up splitting five months after my last day at GM. We don't have no money and, you know, can't find a job. Well, I, I, what, what are we going to do? I'm going to lose the house, going to lose my car. Are we going to be able to keep the lights on? Are we going to be able to have hot water? It's a physical strain. It's an emotional strain, which is very draining. The relationship, it just went completely downhill. So it was just a mutual decision. We just split. So. I kept up with the house for a little while. But once the money ran out and my options ran out on income, I just couldn't keep up. I lost my house. We bought it for 60000 Right now, the house, as we're selling it, we're got on the market for $40,000. Um, the houses we were told in this area are going for 35000 We got into adjustable rate mortgage, which um, starts off real low. After the 24th month, it'll skyrocket. Then after we split, it went up. So I was doing everything I could, you know, working odd jobs here and there, but then, you know, it just got to a point to where I found out the hard way that my arms were only so long. Adjustable rate mortgages are set up for people to fail anyway. More than 150,000 households in Ohio have been hit with home foreclosures. I haven't even had anybody look at the house. I'll be lucky to find a buyer. I'll be blessed to find a buyer. I'm just trying to get out free and clear. People are holding on to every penny that they got. One by one, you see little stores suffer, close down. It was like misery was getting real contagious around here. And many of our products got shipped by rail, 
But as you can see, there's no manufacturing here anymore, so they just whisk right through because there's no reason to stop anymore. People have a lot of old memories of how this used to be, and uh, now it's just memories. I used to be employed with this plant here for 22 years. We supplied roughly 60% of the braking components to General Motors. Things right now are very tenuous. The sure thing is this place right here is closed. You see empty lots. The backside of this facility is wiped away. It's a green field, which means they leveled the plant down to the slab. We're looking at you know roughly about seven or eight thousand people who've lost their jobs over a very short period of time. So you know this is just a symbol of what's happening to the, uh, the manufacturing facilities, not only in the, in Ohio, but in the Midwest in general. You know it's not a very positive picture. This is the job center of Dayton. Job bank, please and I go there for tuition assistance. Right now I'm on a grant at the Barber College that I got through the job center. Every morning just to check, see if I got a response on my um, internet resume. Hopefully something new pops up, but most mornings turning out to be the same. It's a roller coaster. You call to check on the status of your application and you find out, you know, Maybe you and 1,500 other people has applied for the same position and they only got one or two. Well, you almost feel like um, a scavenger. You know, you, you're looking for bones. You grab them at bones here and there. My big dream is to work in barbering. Our hopes is to, in 10 years, have a business. Barbering is like recession or, or poverty proof. You know, people need haircuts to get jobs. And there are a lot of people here looking for jobs. The church has really embraced us, even through our separation. We still were fellow members of the same church. And our problem wasn't necessarily with each other, it was with our situation. One day I walked into the church and it just hit me in my heart. It's like God said to me, hey, that's your wife. She's been with you through everything. We never really stopped loving each other. I really never wanted to leave my husband, ever. Our pastor, he would call and check on us, and that really helped us. I'm pastor of New Destiny Ministries. I worked at Delphi for approximately 30 years. With the economic uh, forecast, I thought that it was the best situation for me to retire at that time and then give full service to uh, not only my church, but the community, uh, as I saw uh, some of the things that were on the horizon economically, and I knew that a lot of families would be affected uh, by what was coming. But there are probably going to be some times where... So I took it upon myself to have classes and talk to them as far as what their plans were, and we discussed the possibilities for their future. Most of them, I think, went through a period of uh, depression. We've also seen people just have to up and relocate because they couldn't get a job here. I definitely think the next president is going to have to make a difference. But uh, realistically, in my heart of hearts, I think it's going to take uh, almost a miracle for this area to turn itself around. What's happened now is that the deck is stacked against the middle class. And under President Bush, that deck has gotten even bigger. You know life can be hard. You've lived hard. You've seen her. You may have lost a job. Some of those manufacturing jobs are not coming back, and you know that, and I know it. We are open for business. This is what I love right here, because this is my goal, getting into barbering. This is what I come to school for. I was in Delphi from uh, 1995 until December of 06, and then I came to school here. I seen it coming. As the years went on, we outsourced a lot of jobs, and as we outsourced jobs, that was people that was lost. Those jobs were no longer there, so yeah, I, I seen it coming. A lot of the talk about turning NAFTA back, I'd like to see it. This is rightly a big issue in Ohio. We need 
to have a plan to fix NAFTA. We've been negotiating just looking at corporate profits and what's good for multinationals, and we haven't been looking at what's good for communities here in Ohio, in my home state of Illinois, and across the country. A lot of the politicians in America talk a lot. Do I think they'll do anything about it? I, I don't think so. I don't think there'll be much done about it. Right now I'm leaning towards Hillary. I think Hillary has a little bit more experience with how to run the office, basically. I am voting for Obama, not that I have anything against Hillary. I mean, if we could have two presidents, I'd probably vote for them both, you know. My son, I hope, would be okay by him witnessing what we've been through in this situation. My worst fear is that it just keeps rolling downhill. Well, this city might become a ghost town. People are here, but jobs are not. I don't want him to have to suffer. I'm optimistic about this upcoming election because with change, there's always hope. You're hoping that with this change, somebody will get it right. Hi, my name is Dan Perkins. I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and I'm 58 years old. For almost my entire life, I've been working in labor positions. That's been getting me through so far. I've had diabetes for 44 years. I have to uh, give myself insulin injections. It makes it pretty important that I have uh, health insurance of some kind. I have to uh, pay for it out of my own pocket the entire amount. It's costing me $433, and that's a huge chunk. That's more than I'm paying for rent. It's more than I'm paying for food. It's more than I'm paying for any other single item is, is the health insurance. Universal health care is key to reviving our economy because look at what happens now. A lot of the manufacturing jobs we have lost in America have been lost because of health care costs. My dad worked for 29 years at his job with General Motors, and his father worked for at least 30 years. His brother worked for 30 years with General Motors. He was a good example for me, so I just decided to uh, continue in that type of work. There were all kinds of benefits, paid vacations, sick leave, paid days off, good health insurance, didn't have to rely on the state or the federal government to provide it. When they retired, the companies offered pensions for their employees. I do sometimes say to my dad that oh, I wish I could have had it like you. There just aren't that many industrial jobs left. You can be working for a company and doing a good job, and then all of a sudden the company comes and tells you that they're downsizing or they're closing. It doesn't seem to matter how good of a job you're doing anymore. I was able to uh, pay my bills up until maybe a couple of years ago. I was getting some support from my mother and from unemployment compensation. But unemployment compensation is something that eventually runs out after about six months. And in uh, 2007, I was hired for a position at Delphi Corporation. And that position, I thought, was going to last me a long time. I was there for uh, nine and a half months. And then I was laid off of that job. Oh, I was told on a Friday afternoon at the end of the working day, didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to my fellow employees or anything. When I was let go, there was nothing that uh, I was entitled to. I applied through several employment agencies. I'd, I'd first thing, I'd, I'd call them up, find out if they had anything for me. Most of the time, they'd be saying no. I'd be checking the classified ads, and I'd also check at the government job center to see if they had any work available. Hard-working Americans are concerned they're concerned about their families, and they're concerned about making their bills. Well, it's about time that the president found out about it. I wonder who told him. Yes, I'd like to uh, go to the job bank. Uh, I come here once a week to see if there are any uh, jobs that are available for me. It's no fun looking for work right now. $7.50 an hour. It can make a person feel uh, a little worthless sometimes.
and I hear those kinds of stories all the time from, from people who've been laid off after 20 years, suddenly they don't have health care, don't have a pension, having to work at a $7 an hour job. I don't think that as I was growing up that I ever thought that things would be as bad as they are right now. I thought that companies were always going to stay here, that everything would just be fine. Hey Jim, uh, this is Tony Currington. Just wanted to touch base with you to uh, see how you were doing, either being employed or if you're involved uh, or engaged in the training program. If you have any questions uh, about anything, just feel free to give me a call. That's what I'm here for. Take care. Hope you're doing well. Bye. What this book is, is a book I created that kind of gives me a list of dislocated workers. They qualify for trade benefits or work that was shipped overseas uh, and displaced many workers here. You know, I'm a little bitter. You know, I'm a little bitter that I got to start over again at the age of 58 and start getting into a new career. I might have been a little more fortunate than others because I was able to sign on and help with dislocated workers, but I feel guilty at the same time because I feel like I'm benefiting from somebody's, some, some people being displaced. I'm just making a follow-up call to encourage them to get into those, those training programs, you know. Jatana, this is uh, Tony Currington. I think the last time you and I talked, we talked about, you know, some retraining and things of that nature, and so I just wanted to kind of update my records as to how you're doing. Well, I'm uh, working at a non-union factory, making eight bucks an hour, barely making it. Yes. No insurance. Yes. Pre existing health condition. So you can imagine how that is. Yeah, I, I understand. I, that's where I'm, I'm hearing these kind of stories from other workers just like you. Primary focus is to get them focused on getting retrained and getting, and getting reemployed again. Oh so we act as a motivator or coach. A worker who has been displaced and who is disillusioned about what the future might hold, we make those, those initial contacts to, to kind of let them know what's there for them. You know, if they're in need of food, and some, some shelter issues, or some uh, medical issues, you know, we can direct them to those services. Eight cans of vegetables, macaroni and cheese. I'm a volunteer at the food pantry. We serve dislocated <laughs> workers, laid off workers. They have to basically swallow their pride and come in and ask. We will serve them. There's 88 more pantries in this area. Usually there'd be lots of customers in here shopping and it's just empty booze and booze with a few vendors that are here hoping for customers to come flowing in. I worked for General Motors for 26 years. The old cliche, so goes the auto industry, so goes this country. Well, the auto industry has fled this country, and we're seeing the results of that now. Honestly, I blame the people that lead the country. I feel like they've sold us down the river. <laughs> Our economy obviously is going through a tough time. And uh, emphasize um, my commitment to free trade. Uh, I believe that those agreements uh, are, should be kept. So it's time that the American worker had a partner in the White House. Somebody is going to get up every day and say, what can I do today to save jobs and grow jobs and provide quality, affordable health care to every single American? We don't need the same old folks doing the same old things, playing the same old games over and over again. Ohio is an important state as far as the elections are concerned. I would define myself basically as a Republican because of abortion and social issues. Folks are I voted for George W. Bush. The dream that so many generations fought for. I like what uh, like Barack Obama forward. had to say in regards to make sure that the government realizes that uh, we've got to offer incentives to keep these companies here in the United States. We have to stop providing tax breaks for companies that are shipping jobs overseas and give those tax breaks to companies that are investing here in the United States of America. Of the three major candidates, I'm, I'm leaning more towards Barack the, Obama. The implication is if you talk about hope, this is definitely nice. a new thing for me. Finally, I did get a call from an agency. First question I asked, uh, is this, they just want me for one day or they want me permanently? And they said, yes, this, this could be a full-time full job. So I said, I'll be there. It was like a prayer being answered. Have you ever done direct deposit before? Good things are coming. <laughs> it's like getting a Christmas present, really. 
Getting a Christmas present in March. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought I saw a lucky penny there. <laughs> I hope and pray that it'll be it'll be the last time I'll have to look. Because it's just it's just no fun. Especially now. I mean, 20 years ago, it wasn't that difficult. The long drive back and forth. I'm just hoping my car holds up, because my car is 11 years old. I have to work about four hours in order to uh, fill up my ta gas tank. So that'd be about half a day's pay. And I just spent $31 at the same station about five or six days ago. I'm very happy about finally uh, receiving a paycheck. The last check I received was uh, almost, almost, well, four and a half months ago. Seems like a nice company to work for. I know the two of their customers are Honda and Toyota. I'm happy to be working there. And I hope that I'll be there a while. I'm looking forward to it. I basically had to look at it and verify that it was the right part. There's 30 in each box. We have to put a little sticker on each one of them. It was, it was hard. Because, I mean, it, it wore me out. But uh, I think it'll work out all right. Oh, first thing I do is just uh, sit down for a few minutes and uh, just take a load off my feet and then turn on the television. In, in part because of the birth. And there's not too much on this time of night, but uh, well, it's certainly good to be home. You hear that? I just lost my I just lost my job. So now I'm unemployed again. But I guess So I'm starting all over again. Well, that's rough. <laughs>